Hello, Rantbox TV watchers. It is once again a Rantbox TV day. I'm here with two members of Gen. They are Leah and Leona. How are you guys doing? Hi. <laughs> We're doing well, thank you. How okay. You? <laughs> <laughs> so I have the habit of just like doing all of them. I feel like I've never had a conversation in my life right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. No, no. I think like our, our conversation before the cameras rolling was so prudent and I'm just happy that you guys are here to be candid and open about what we're talking about today um, and that is the subject of the idea who is it's kind of affected a lot of musicians artists painters but the idea that you have to be a mess in order to create something valid or interesting um, Leona you said that this is something that you feel strongly about um, tell me more about it yeah, so um, now I'm going to be like a year sober um, in February. And yeah, I mean, through loads of therapy, I just realized that I was basically a mess, <laughs> as one does. And I started working on myself um, more. And yeah, basically, um, I wrote this record like sober. And uh, I think I feel like it really helped me a lot to just be in touch with what what's happening at the moment as well and just to have more clarity in my head and yeah it's a total myth obviously because little does one know that there are repercussions obviously when you're operating um <laughs> like a total mess so I don't know it's just like being able to just you know be aware of what's happening made me realize a lot of things and Obviously, um, from Titty Monster to this new OP that obviously uh, we're going to release, um, there has been a sense of maturity as well with regards to style, perhaps, and lyric wise as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, personally, I just feel a lot better. Obviously, I'm no advocate to say that you should do this or that. Um, but <laughs> yeah, that's, fair. that's fair. I think there's Ultimately, it's a case by case basis. I mean, I think there is a truism that if you do have um, a certain traumatic event, that if you do turn to art to understand it, then there can be benefits of that. But for those who haven't necessarily been through that and maybe have imposter syndrome, I don't think that's particularly healthy. So yeah, I'm that's... glad that you guys are here to talk about that. Um, there, yeah. I have to say, there's a, a song on uh, Titty Monster that's called Sober, and it's just the most incredible, strange experience. Um, tell me more about that. Did that actually happen, or is this? Yes, possible? it did yeah. happen to me. Um, we almost got, um, we got harassed. Um, I don't know whether I'm allowed to. Oh, you can swear. <laughs> I mean, you can. Well, we, we both know what this song's about, but our viewers don't. So if you want to take us through it, please do. Yeah, because uh, basically that 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 song um, was written ages ago. <laughs> um, I was in Paris and uh, we went um, to this place, and you basically yeah, you can just uh, watch porn <laughs> in in Paris, and it was just me and my friends. And little did we know that we were just gonna um, I don't know get in trouble. I guess it was just basically like we we got really harassed me and my other um, girlfriend. So I don't know, it was just both traumatic and funny at the same time, because the way I deal with trauma is just, I, I just like joke about it or laugh mm. it out, kind of like try to make it funny. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's common as well, just sort of like with these things, it's very easy to um, kind of deflect the sort of just how you know, weird the situation was with, you know, like, haha, it, it's a, it's a, it's a joke and I can laugh about it. So it truly, it can't have been that bad. Um, but it was actually bad, you know, it, it was traumatic. It's just that, I don't know, we were at the rehearsal space and they were just playing this riff. Um, and I don't know, then Janelle was like, what about you start like, um, you know, that's going through. It's actually not quite how it happened though. Not for that, because the song had a thing where ages before we actually recorded it, the story being told would be a kind of ad lib of some event, usually yeah. of revolving around being like um, at one of these um, one of these clubs where which are notorious for you know substance use and being um, and you know like being present and seeing everyone making a fool of them. And this, the story would change every performance, and then. Um, I think this event happened after the song 
existed and then yeah, after. once that happened it started becoming the recurring yeah, story but yeah. like purely because it was yeah I wanted to get over it in my head so when we were in the Harrison space I was just like you know like yeah. constantly oh, it's it just coming back so so hardcore I have to say um talking to you guys is great because you've actually made me stumble into an idea that I've never had before but Essentially, if we've got this idea of the the mis, um, misanthropic, messed up character who goes from, say, bar to bar, complete mess, writes about it like a poet the next day, gets up on stage, we've got the idea because it's a, a fantasy projected by those who actually put out certain records, right? And if that fantasy has been with us for so long, how has that fantasy maybe affected those who may have had other ideas or other dreams as to who they could be? You know, do you I mean, I think, sorry, um, uh, I think in a way it's, you know, um, it was pushed forward as well by the rock star ideal as, in, you know, like you think of Motley Crue or, you know, any band from that era and there's, you know, this idea that they were, you know, the, the hookers and blow type, you know, uh, kind, of, kind of thing. So there was this association and um, yeah, so I think it kind of perpetuated this idea of the like the tortured artist that has to be, you know, like constantly out of it because that's where yeah. they get their inspiration and stuff. And turbulence. There's yeah, and there's I would say that there is a small section in truth in that I do think that art that a lot of art does come from some version of pain in the sense that but the fact is that it's something that we're all going to experience, you know, like whether we go seek it out or not. So why would you, you know, like go, um, well, why would you obviously, everyone has their demons and such. It's not, not saying that everyone actively tries to make their lives worse, but it's not um, like, I think even if you try to, you know, do everything as, as straight as possible, the odds are you're gonna face something that will affect you in a way that you could create, you know, that could fuel you to create art. Yeah. it doesn't have to be you know you don't have to be you know like in a face full of cocaine off someone's back or something yeah <laughs> with, with a <laughs> yeah you're right I think um you you hit the nail on the head with that one word fuel pain is only one thing that you can inject into your um reality or realize it's in your reality and then thus have a way of telling your own unique story but I think the danger happens when you think that your story isn't interesting enough because you haven't had a morning where you woke up with seven needles in your arm and you don't know who that is next to you in the bed. It doesn't have to be that way, but we've been projecting this idea because maybe part of us subconsciously believes that that is um, a kind of format that people who have power are looking for to exploit your art, you know, so. Yeah, I think that makes sense as well, because it's, um, and thinking about it now, it could be sort of a way to, separates um sort of artists from non-artists think of it well not not it, but you know like we had the idea sort of imagine as a sort of a non-artist or someone who has some artistic um tendencies but they're not quite at the point where you know like either they don't want to like do it professional or whatever and there's that like sort of like an us us and them mm -hmm. thing if that makes sense where they think oh if like you know, my life is really normal, so I can't pursue art, or I don't want to pursue art because I'll end up like that um, kind of thing. And sure. Sure. I think that it's an an interesting thing that played because you know, you look at these these biopics, for example, of any musician, you know, the the Sid and Nancy type thing, <laughs> the Jim Morris um, and Doors. Yeah, yeah, the every like most of them, they, you're not going to see them make a film about an artist who lived a happy life with his family and yeah. just <laughs> or who, who, who's you know going to therapy, trying to yeah. work on themselves constantly, you know, having a work because you need to pay your rent, you know, doing meetings all the time because the band requires so having a Dropbox account for everything and the Google. <laughs> <calendar>. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, <laughs> for very easy, I'd like to see them deal social media i don't think <laughs> <laughs> we tried actually doing that um on jen's page we used to do like uh, jen tuesdays and oh, just like literally dude. if like post stuff of what we're doing 
in our lives, you know, like for example, I used to be a cabin crew and still touring with the band and Leah, I was working at an IT company as well in Malta. So we were like, we do this, but we also do this, you know, like don't let all of this like, work, yeah. you know, it's just, there's another end to that, you know, don't be fooled. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would say in the modern day, there's definitely um, sort of, I read an article about this ages ago. Um, can you tell I read a lot of like introspectives? But anyways, um, I read an article at some point about how it was about Villa Valo, him specifically, how he was like the last a relic of the rock star image and how in modern day, a lot of bands are very much more like the the musician next door. <laughs> you know, like this, there's this sense of the image is a lot more rooted in relatability in the modern age and such and the whole, you know, like, oh, they're a human being just like me. Um, so, which I find, which is definitely interesting because it, it's, it shows that, you know, there is some sort of shift. And I think as Jen, from, we yeah. truly value that because I, I think we just want to uh, present that idea that this is what you get, what you see is what you get. Oh, yeah. No, for Even sure. through all lyrics, I guess. Um, when I write the lyrics, it's always like, <laughs> you know, what's here, it's just like, yeah, yeah, indeed. I, I have to say, um, the, the relatability issue um, is is great. There is, however, a dark side because not every band is, if I may say so, as fearless as you, but feels that they have an entitlement or an accessibility to the art world. For instance, um, I don't like naming names, but there's a band called Keen who you may or may not know, um, but they have a very beige kind of um, presentation. It's very, it doesn't offend anyone. You could be walking through rate shows and hear the music on and not even think of it as music because it's designed to actually just, well, just kind of fill in the gap between conversation. Um, but what do you do when you have people who don't necessarily want to reveal their story and they feel that they are actually able to, to have some kind of foothold in this industry? Because bands like that, unfortunately, in my opinion, do get propagated as, um, worthy of people's time, even though it's not necessarily art. I mean, what do you think of that? I mean, I think on a product. Eh? No, that's yeah, no. I don't think so. I mean, it depends. Like, if if you're do doing it for the sake of curating an image, you, you know, for the sake of like marketing reasons, that's one thing. But yeah. you know, not everyone who's in the in this industry has to be comfortable. You know, like bearing all and I don't think that's it, it's a big trend right now and we're you we know like it's it, it's it worked out for us that we're like that but if an artist you, you know like for instance Dolly Parton apparently wears her blonde wig so that when she goes out with her husband who hates the being in the public image she goes with like her natural hair normal clothes and nobody recognizes her you know like I think we have you know you have every right to do that even if it's if it's you know, out of your comfort zone, or it's not the image. Just, uh, you know, everyone needs to be true to what their image is, really, what Just they want not. to express. And not expressing everything about yourself is an expression in itself yeah. as well. Sure, sure, sure. I did feel it was worthy bringing up because um, there was a contingent part of the people that follow me who bring this up on a regular basis, saying that things have become quite safe, even in um, the respect that you guys are very honest, I can see that, I knew that before talking to you. Um, but there are people who will use these, these social issues to give themselves um, a legitimacy, you know, a certain kind of way into the conversation and not necessarily have anything to say within that conversation. Um, so I thought that would be worthy. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna stop overthinking now. I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, a, it's an interesting point though. It is an interesting point because it's very, I think it just boils down to everyone being, you know, sort of true to themselves. There's a there's a certain debate to be had because, um, you know, not, not everyone with a public image has an obligation to be, you know, to, to have political opinions about things. Yeah. And also, um, you know, in terms of most things like, you, you know, like for instance, making deciding who you're aligning with politically like why the fuck would you listen to an artist or a musician <laughs> you know just do the research and but um but then there's also the argument that since you have a voice that people listen to you need to use it to propel and so there's a you know like there's something on yeah, there's both a gray, sides yeah. yeah but 
I think if what you're going to put out is not, you know, like, you know, you haven't, for example, put the research behind it or you're doing it for the yeah. sake of clout, um, it's better to just be true to yourself and just yeah. skirt around being, you know, political, for example, at all. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's an ongoing conversation, um, particularly when you think of like what happened early in the year with the pandemic, BLM, you know, because I was quite vocal about how so many bands were quite... Oh. We're stuck. Hey, John, we lost you a bit. <laughs> Hello. Is the internet still working? I think ours is still working. For me, I thought it was a lot more heartfelt. Oh, you're here. Hello. The video froze. We're so <laughs> sorry. This happens so much. My internet connection is sometimes quite bad. At what point did you lose me? What was I saying? We were talking we were... about B BLM yeah. and the pandemic and what happened. And you were like um, very vocal about it. And you were talking about bands, but that's what I heard. So. Yeah, that's right. So, essentially, some bands were very tokenistic about it. Some bands were very full on about it. Um, some bands said absolutely nothing um, and waited for the Save Our Venues as a time to actually start talking about it again. And then, Leona, we've actually had a chat on camera about your feelings about BLM. So I don't count you as like someone who didn't necessarily do anything. And even then, even if I did, you know, it's my opinion. I don't represent all the black people. Do you know what I mean? So um, I yeah. it's, it's really important to say that, I think, in these times. But yeah, I, I really wanted to know more about how, at some point, the idea of the rock and roll, say, um, messed up musician, when did you subconsciously become aware of it? And did you ever actively, you know, work with it to be who you were before you um, embraced a life of sobriety? I don't know. I personally realized after, obviously, um, physically <laughs> suffering a lot. Um, and when it started to affect my inner circle rather than myself personally, um, because I think, I don't know, ooh, this is hard to talk about, but I think I have more respect for my circle rather than for myself. Um, so when it started to affect them, <clears throat> yeah, then I started to realize that, listen, you can't lose these people because without these people they're, they're your pillars you know in your life um you can't hurt them I didn't mind hurting myself obviously because um I guess I was very impulsive as a person but yeah that's when I realized that was a turning point when I started losing the people that I love the most or hurting my family or my friends I was like this can't keep on happening you know and obviously because of the physical effects um as well and yeah, I didn't want to be um, a burden for the band as well, because it was kind of like affecting the whole working process as well. I mean, I was very unreliable. I guess maybe at a to a certain extent, we all are a bit unreliable, but I mean, you know, you, you, just, you just have to be there. It just cannot be that excuse, you know, that you're just like sleeping, um, a hangover or, um, or a, a, a calm down calm for down. like a whole week you know it's just like yeah I had to just basically <laughs> sort myself out. No thank you for being so open I mean we don't necessarily <laughs> see it in a lot of mass media I mean a lot of the time when we associate people needing therapy they're either taken against their will or they seem to have really really big houses and have the luxury of thinking maybe I'm not in a good place do you know what I mean but we don't really propagate the idea of someone who's working class going you know what we've all got issues and I've actually got to sort my stuff out so I'm going to go and sort my stuff out by going to an actual professional so it's going to yeah. be Signal away by mentioning that as something that you've done. Yeah, it's, it's a bit hard to talk about it, honestly. Uh, I, I kind of didn't expect we were going this day, but it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm very vocal about it, like, so it's cool. Uh, I don't know. I just think that, in a way, it just comes from within. Like, even though that for some people it might be a problem, but it also, like, it hides a lot of other things, you know? Like, it numbs everything. So I, I do understand that it can be hard, you know, and I don't know, I still work with um, pain. Pain and art is just like, they're, they're, there's this relationship. <laughs> so it's just like, I don't know, when I open the Pandora's box, as I say, 
there's still pain in there, you know. Um, but I just learned how to go about it basically in a healthy way so that I won't destroy myself at the end of the day because then <laughs> there won't be any gen music anymore. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. If that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure your bandmates will be very relieved to hear that as well. So, by all <laughs> yeah, I think it, it's it's definitely sort of a good um, group because we're very um, sort of there's been this constant like element of and you know within a group context of you know self awareness in terms of our psyches and how we work and you know to. You know, from, to to group we, yeah, we did well. do group therapy as a band at some point. Wow. We've all been to therapy individually, um, as far as I, yeah, yeah um, all of us, yeah. And it's very, I think, the fact that we we all happen to be of the mindset of you know being like self aware of what our behaviors are and such definitely helps us like cultivate it in ourselves and in each other. So you know, we're at the point that. For instance, you know, we can recognize a behavior and, you know, an, another another person within the group and be like, hey, you know, you're, you're doing this thing um, and, and knowing how to respond to it as well. Like, yeah, yeah. not to take things personally and make it like a major yeah. problem, you know, to know that, listen, that person has that condition. So maybe it's not a really good time. So that's why that person is acting that way. But we very much value this mm. relationship, you know, within the band. Um, yeah. I guess that's how it works. We're, we're always like constantly making sure that everyone is like comfortable with everything, literally. Yeah, that's yeah. Quite beneficial to see. I mean, as I said off camera, I only really discovered you um, through a video that Lou Smith did with you guys. Yeah. And, like it's very obvious how very united you are as a band you know not just in your relationship value but also in your ability to communicate how you feel about something in a nuanced way which is my little kind of like trick to move us into your single um you've called it 23rd of march and i suppose anyone that googles that um if they listen to some of the lyrics will know more about what the song's about um do you want to tell me a bit more about how it came together and what inspired you to put this track out there all right, so 23rd of March, because it was the start of lockdown in the UK. Um, so it's related to coronavirus, obviously, um, the whole lockdown situation. And it's basically um, based on what was going, you know. The key <laughs> events of, yeah. the, of this time period, mainly. <laughs> like, it's been a very... Um, a, a moment of unrest in various ways you know both in terms of the the, the health element of it and yeah. the political element Situation, of it the political and, stress that and yeah. you know th things you didn't think would be political but are because if you if you think about it you know like uh, BLM was became a political thing the coronavirus became a political thing because you had the naysayers who were yeah. and which are you know things that shouldn't inherently be but they were anyway because um not not least of all because um you know thing particular things were perpetuated by the higher-ups and there's a certain yeah. just in general you know this year everyone's frustrated and because of so many different things which um you know i think they're they're and the whole situation in malta as well yeah as well it's it, it's just it's, it's wacky i can't think of <laughs> I could think of better words, but they're more obscene. But um, yeah, this I feel like this. You can be obscene. It's not. I know, and, and I, I mean, I was gonna, I was gonna say fuck up, so it's words. not even that bad. But yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, because I forgot to can you swear words here. Not yeah. that I want to. But <laughs> I, 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 my my filter is horrible. Like, it's good. It's always good to know. But um, yeah, I genuinely think that the song is kind of like a time capsule of now and everything that we've been frustrated at seeing and living through um and which also extends to everyone I think. oh sorry sorry because no. it also encapsulate like the whole um heritage of where we come from and the chorus if we want to go like really oh into yeah it. oh yeah you explained it once yes. you know it. <laughs> okay because what's that tell us more about the chorus and how it links to your heritage because other oh, bands talked about this it's 
don't necessarily have that as an ability to, to draw from. So, yeah. Mm. Oh, yes. Yeah, no, it's a very, it's a subtle detail, mind you, but it's very, um, since Malta, Malta is Roman Catholic and very old fashioned. So there's this thing, like, for example, every time I go to visit my grandma and I tell her, you know, like, yes, I'm still a musician. Yes, I still, I live, in, I still live in the UK, all that stuff. And she, she ends, you know, like this very, um, to explain like kind of stereoty- like the kind of like rosary clutching mentality like the you know like I'll pray f- I'll pray for your soul my child kind of thing um, and, and that's you know it's very prevalent back home in the in sort of the old school culture so that was a little the course was a tiny nod yeah, to that when because when you have was... like a bad soul so to speak or like a bad aura, or you're just a bad person in general doing bad things, if that makes sense. We just be like, oh, we're gonna say a little prayer for your yeah. soul and God will save you, you know? It's just like that sort of thing. So that's where it comes from. Yeah. <laughs> okay, God, you guys have got so much to, like, to, to put out there. I'm so happy to be um, in some way <laughs> able to facilitate that. Um, where can oh. people go to check out your music if they indeed feel that, yeah, I like what these people are saying to John. I want to buy their stuff. Where can they go? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have Bandcamp. We have Bandcamp is probably the best place to, you know, like um, give us, to, to help us fund what we do because we've got the pre-orders for the EP. We've got, you know, the songs that we've got out already. You called can Liminal. Buy. Yeah, the EP is called Liminal. It's got a fish on the front. It's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and but then we're also, I mean, mainly it's Bandcamp and typical streaming. Um, you know, we're on all the main ones. We're on, I think we're even on like Tidal and Deezer and stuff like that. So, <laughs> if, yeah, out now. Am I right in thinking that? What's that? The EP out now. No, the EP will be out early next year. So far, we released the one song um, in March. There will be some more, maybe. I don't. I hope mm. that was okay to say. Oh, yeah, I think so. I think so yeah. And <laughs> I we also, also we also got like um, maybe some gigs announcements. Oh. Maybe no, and touch wood that it will happen because um, <laughs> yeah. you know we're well, we're, 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 we're. I'm a bit worried there might be guns going on. Is that? What you're <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> no, that's like the it's like it's like the the fonts thing you know like the, the a. Okay. a this is just me trying to be trendy i'm sorry it's, the, it's okay you're already trendy put the guns away don't need I'm sorry. <laughs> with my other bus <laughs> Oh no! It's okay. It's all good. Thank you so much for your time, and I want to <laughs> reassure uh, Leah's grandmother that she's not hanging out with someone who has guns. <laughs> okay. All right. Have a lovely time. <laughs> Thank you for Thank having you. us. This was great. <laughs> Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye bye.